people. Welcome to another episode of Bethel Brothers Hot Rod Project 69. I don't know if you can tell by my voice, but I've been sick. That's why you haven't seen anything or heard anything from me. Um, I'm out here kind of working on some of the body work to finish it off. And I know you're bored of watching that. But what has a pertinence to this episode is it's been about one year since I started this. Um... I broke down the hours where each episode is probably about four hours-ish of work. So do the math on the episodes and that's how much time I've spent working on uh, this truck. So what I thought today might be kind of cool. Let's take a look back. Maybe splice some of the best of from the past to see where I got to today. That way it won't seem so stalled out. I don't know. It might suck. You may not want to watch it. I don't know. Let's find out. Let's start with the intro. Going back. Going back. Going back. Taking a look. In the old Wayback Machine. Hooker. 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 Okay, so this is it. Uh, 1969 Chevy uh, Custom Camper. It's got a 350 in it. I can't get the hood off because Joey and I just sat it on there. <clears throat> There's no bed on it. Um, the guy did some work on it. He was going to lower it, so he put these channels on, which I am going to fix. Sorry about the camera not focusing. It's kind of early. Uh, the interior is really clean. There's some damage and stuff that I'm going to fix. <clears throat> The seats tore up, but the dash area and stuff, big hole in the steering wheel's got to be fixed. This thing's cracked it. shit, so I'm going to have to fix that. But everything else is pretty clean. Uh, there's some things to fix. Headliner's going to get redone. This is all going to be black like Sam's was. Project Sam. Um... There'll come a point where I show you the motor and stuff, but that's just not coming now. Most notably are these big dents that are in the back. They're on both damn sides. But the gas tank's in there. So in order to beat those dents out, I'm going to have to get the seat out and the gas tank out. Must be a lock on the other side. Anyway, I'm going to take the seat out. I'm going to take the carpet out. I'm going to take these little siding mabobs off. Everything I can take off. This dash I'm going to take off. And I'm going to work on some of these. See this, man? We got some screws poking through. I used to have those big old stupid mirrors that went from there to there. And I got these holes to deal with. I want them gone. I want these trim pieces gone. Used Windex and wiped everything down really good. And where it's rusty, I've got some uh, primer that when you spray it over rust, it turns it to zinc. It's kind of like that rust destroyer I've used in the past. And then uh, I got some undercoating, bed coating, and off-brand cheap, cheap, cheap. I'm going to spray that in there. So it's going to get some rust protector and then whatever... That's too ugly for me. I'll just fill that in with some of the fiberglass. Oh, speaking of that, I applied a bunch to some spots, letting it dry. Just use a little trowel. This one over here where it was bad, I'm going to have to do it again. The dent was too deep. There's still some dent right there. I also got the one up on the window. And ta-da! It's been murdered out, yo. Still got these pieces up here, which I'll tape off the windows to do that, but uh, most of this stuff's going to be covered up anyway, so it doesn't really matter. I even got the sides. Yeah, I'll have to go to the other side. With lighting conditions and all. See, side kick panel. Looks a lot cleaner, easier to work with. That rust stuff really covered up the goopy junk. And then this stuff kind of just sprays out like plastic. I got some foggy spots, but it, like I said, I don't care. It kind of seals it up. That way, if there's like any loose wires bumping around somewhere, it's not going to make contact with the frame. 
It's all insulated. Like I said, I'm covering it up, but I got something clean to start with. Look at this hideous steering wheel. Look at that. Ah. All right. So I got the piece all cleaned up, tacked, welded, super welded on the D setting. I don't know if you can see this, but I also beveled the edges. Ow, oh, hot, 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 hot. That way it welds all the way to the end, penetrating all the way through. And I'm doing C welds. Sometimes I gotta spin back, but I wait till it fills in and then go back. But I got a long way to go, and I still gotta change the oil on that thing. Call my grandma. Lots of stuff, man. So I, I was kind of feeling like I was gonna be ambitious to get a lot of this done, but this is really thick still, so I'm gonna have to wait on that. I'll get this one done, though. With the mouth full of cookie and fading light, I got it welded in there. Um, and the welder took a dump. Alright, so Joe brought me over some steel that he had, and this stuff is beef. It is super thick, it's probably 3 eighths thick. I even had to score it with a cutter to get it to bend. I tried heating it up, I tried bolting it down and hitting it, I couldn't move it unless I cut it. I made one for the other side over there too. What that's going to do is gusset the inside. Such. Well, I got it going the right way. Yeah. Ta da! Now I still have some gaps and stuff to deal with, especially right there. But for the most part, I got a good fit. So I'm going to weld that over it. And uh, uh, after that, I'm going to put in some more cross members, probably some of this square stock like this one. So I got some place to mount shocks and I also got some driveline stuff I got to do when I put in the tranny. So this will just beef up this area so that it never splits. That's why I wanted to put in a cross member here and a cross member there. That way if any of these welds ever broke, the weights carried across the cross members on either side. That will be welded to these edges. You'll see. So... I also was planning on drilling some holes in this so I could uh, do some plug welds. It's a lot of grinding. Alright, so it's been like a couple hours and I drilled some holes for some plug welds on both ends and I welded up where I cut it. You can see the penetration burn line. So it's really it's one piece now. It's going to stay that shape no matter what. I've got one mocked up over here. So you can kind of see how it's going to... Ow! i got to 
quit walking into the it's got it clamped on you can see the connections instead of this I get that I do have some gaps but I'll just fill them in and squeeze it in this end's got to be squeezed in but I'm pressing it down hard so I can get a nice tight weld there and I'll just move the clamp down get it tacked on there so I got that side welded on um, I didn't do the bottom yet I'm running out of time but it's real clean there's some nice freaking welds man all the way down I got to about here on the bottom of this one and about here on the bottom of that one I have to do the rest from the on this side there I'm just gonna weld it up and leave that hanging but uh comparatively speaking when it looked like that and now it's that that's a lot better yes beef it is the beef there's no way that joint's gonna break now filled the plug holes now I'm working on the shock cross member I'm trying to square it up off of this but none of the bolt holes are bitching so I'm kind of going off the total back end right there I cut these square tubes out of that stupid yeah so if anybody wants those let me know and I'll sell them to you for a million dollars because you're a low rider maker and yuck I mean, some people like them. I'm just not that dude. So, eating the Snickers. Uh, what I'm going to do is try to get it level to the frame. And then uh, I'm going to push these down because they're all the way out. I'm going to push them down about a half inch. That way they can't top out. Unless I'm jumping like bridges. But I don't plan to jump bridges, and plus when the bed's on it, it'll suck down even more, so. I'm just going to try to square that up, weld that on, and then I'm going to put another one on the back end. That's what I was talking about, tying in everything, so that can't break because it's triangulated. You dig it? thing you might notice is that angle iron piece that was there is gone. I got the cross member in, shocks are mounted. I even made these tabs out of angle iron. I'm not going to lie about it. The underneath there is kind of high, so i got to sand that down. But that's no big deal. Like on that one, i got clearance. That one I do not. Same over here. But I was going to apply some paint, and I didn't think any of this stuff would really stand out if I did. So I want to protect the metal. I'm going to shoot some bed liner on it. So take a good look, freakos. The hump is now gone and it is totally boxed in. Looks good. I need to get some bolts for these too. These are just mock ups. I'm gonna get some of these grade eights. Psh, the shinies. They don't break. So I'm gonna squirt a little paint on this. We'll call it good. Alright, it's so a done text and Joe. And there's the frame with some paint on it. Nice, nice, nice. I still, the reason I didn't paint the rear end was because the uh, little cups that the springs sit on, I have to weld those on. So, I still got some more stuff to do to the rear end. Uh, hello people, welcome to another episode of Bethel Brothers Hot Rod, Project 69. I got uh, the bed on and I started making some brackets out of this thick material to... Uh, Mount the bed. And because it's not the right bed for it, I kind of had to make my own mounts. Welded it up there. Same on that side. Um, up here in front, what I'm going to do is go off of the, the mounts for the old bed. I'm going to drill a hole through there, which I started, but my battery died. And then just go straight up to here, bolt, weld, 
bed stiff and then I'm gonna put the gas tank in between there once I get this mounted up I'll show you so now that I know it's gonna fit in there I'm also making this plug hole for this so I'm gonna cover up so I got my uh, gas cap thing welded in weldy welded welding I'm in a hurry and I'm tired so um, there's enough divot where I can use some body filler to round that out to match this contour since the metal was so thick I recessed it a little bit uh, I also went ahead and made these brackets right here see how they contour up come out and kick up gonna weld it up here bolt it there gonna check my measurements make sure they're good and then sting them okay so the beds tabs are welded and they're all bolted it's beef now I can it's not gonna move it's squared I've got lateral supports this way and then flat supports this way so it shouldn't rock or move getting lines like that out of uh, square tubing isn't easy to get that kind of curve especially when you're doing it in a vise and what I'm doing is I lay it down and I make these marks periodically and then all I do is bend it like so alright so I got a basic frame going on uh, follows the contours then I'm going to skin it this uh, bending these uh, square tubes on this bottom end are kind of a bitch you have to get creative here but it's stout I can shake the truck and I can't really see it because I shake when I try to shake it but it's pretty beef uh, uh, and then getting this to go on because that compound angle that goes back at an angle is going to be kind of a fun thing to do I'll probably do the old paper template on that one did it out of paper you know, paper, paper, paper. Scrub the paper instead of metal. Um, I haven't did the body work yet. Obviously, her uh, cover is getting canceled out. That won't be there and it'll be smooth across. And then this line where it stops, I'm going to get rid of it too. That way it's smooth. -y. Starting to come along. Um, I'm prepping to get all the fiberglass on. Um, the metal that I put in there I set with some screws drywall ones so they wouldn't come out in case you were wondering and then if you're wondering what this blue tape is these are all the inserts where those little moldy things went and I ground down all the bolts that were showing and that's just so uh, the fiberglass doesn't fall through the hole and why am I telling you about tape because it's kind of important this back one this is what this episode's all about, where it's all busted. I've gone over it with a light coat of primer, just so it has some bite when I put it on. And then using blue tape. See? Blue tape. I ran backing, and this is how I fixed uh, that smashed up top for the blazer project. Let's get to what you really want to see this back end. Now you remember how broken it was, right? All of this to fix, and when I go and do that, I will show you more because there's a big chunk of it missing. I'll show you guys how to do this. It's pretty easy. It looks bad, and it is bad. See, look, it's totally broken. But I'll show you how to fix it. You can totally fix those. Now you can hit it. Not doing it easy. Now it's still kind of shaky a little bit because I didn't fill all the, like that, where the bumper had dug into that. I didn't get that all fixed. There's still some busted edges, but it's closer. It is closer, and the tape did its trick. Ta 
So anyway, sanded down the fiberglass that I put on, mixed a hot load even though it's cold. It's actually raining. Um, as you can see by this shape, those are the low spots. So I got to fill them in. I even highlighted them so I wouldn't miss them. And uh, once I do that, I'm going to step over here and apply some of the fiberglass down this line too. Reason being, I know I'm going to get some in the crack. And where I couldn't get in there and weld, that stuff will fill in between there. And then I'll just hit it with a file. Be nice and sealed. Get some shape to it. So, time to mix up some on the big sign mixer of doom. Sand it down for the second time. Uh, I still have one, two of those spots. And you can see this stuff is really thin. Uh, you might even be able to see the paint underneath it too. Them colors of paint, some of the lines I made. So it's super, super thin. And it's actually flexible. I might be able to shove it around. And it's not gonna, it's not gonna crack or break when you do it this way. This is what will make, uh, your body work last a long time. Now I've already uh, applied the first layer on this one when I redid that one the first time. And I've kind of, I have got the edges all cleaned up as you can kind of see here. The purpose for the tape is I want to build some more up on this side because it's kind of doing this. It's not doing this, it's doing this. And I kind of wanted that so I could avoid all those banging the corner issues. So I'm just going to slightly build this up and I do not want to get it in the crack again. So the tape is there just to catch the edge and it won't stick to it. In fact, I'll tuck it in just a little bit. Um, last episode I had put on a bunch of fiberglass on here and I told you I peeled the tape off prematurely and it left this little gap in there that I'm going to have to fill. And it's going to take a lot of up-close, personal, blister-making type of sanding. And I don't feel like doing that today. So, in here, within the dark abyss, lies the uh, jockey box I'm working on. It'll give me some room in the back to make, like, a, another storage area. And then I'm going to have to make a guide to keep it on straight so when it opens and closes, it shuts evenly. You kind of like a, a thing over here, kind of like a tailgate deal. It's going to suck. And then uh, I started the cup holders. This is just three inch PVC pipe that I cut off and then took some round stock and made like these cup tits. Cup tits. I made some cup tits. <laughs> Sanded this down. Even started working on this uh, upper bit. As you can see, I got a crack to fill. That's from pulling the tape out too soon. Dork. I'm pretty much done on the framework for this thing. Give you a little bird job view right there. It's all going to get wrapped. I haven't decided what. But the cup holders take some 3 inch PVC. Um, not going to fall over. And then I had to put these little guides on here to keep the, uh, so the lid is shut straight. I don't know if you could see them in action. I'll probably sleeve them with some kind of plastic so it doesn't rub in there. But the lid shuts straight and then I'm going to put like a lock on it. Probably another support later on. That's why I'm not painting it as of yet. Alright people, so there you have it. About one year. Been here. It's hard to believe <coughs> that I'm cold, and I want to get over this cold. I got to get back to work, so that's gonna do it. Thanks for tuning in and watching Bethel Brothers Hot Rod Project 69. Oh yeah, and there's something else. I cut off all my hair. See? Yep, all gone. That's something new, right? <laughs> no, I didn't donate it. Cut it off. At a bunch of little pieces. It wasn't easy to do. Should have, would have, had I thought about it, but I didn't. Just cut it off, so. I wanted to. Tired of it. It was all beat up, so. Till the next time. <coughs>
See? Told you I was sick. Peace out, babies. Mm, I don't feel good. <coughs> I really don't feel good. <coughs> yep. 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 Hooker.